Hello, it's Prophet Six again. That's right, Prophet Six again. I got a powerful word for you today. I uh, was talking with to one of my my subscribers today, and the Lord had placed on on my heart to do a study on a subject that uh, is so powerful. I mean, it's one of the most powerful prophecies in the Bible. I mean, this prophecy in the Bible just proves so much that the Bible is true. It is, it is amazing. And the prophecy that I'm speaking of, that's me, Prophet Six, the family prophet to the church of Laodicea. Yeah, Laodicea. The last church in the Bible that God is going to allow wheat and tares to be mingled together. The last one, seven, complete. Now, we're going to have a study on that too, by the way. But uh, what what the Spirit of the Lord has put on my heart today is a urgency to communicate to the world a prophecy about Daniel chapter 2. Now, <clears throat> one of the things I want to express to you today is that uh, we... I been studying this prophecy for many many years but the Lord has given me some understanding that a lot of people skip over uh, not only in content but also in in demonstration in exposition in the way that the scripture is this these scriptures and this text is exegeted now <laughs> Without further ado, we're not going to go through a big hymn and haunt. Uh, we're going to go get right to the point. Daniel chapter 2. And I want to bring out some things to show that whenever we are studying this prophecy, there's a way to study this prophecy where you can tell that the person has a kingdom mindset. And there's a way to study this prophecy, Daniel chapter 2, and you can tell that the people are not even born again. You can tell that. I'm going to show you. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. Let's say a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the word. We ask, Lord, that you, in, that you bring the Holy Spirit to bear upon this subject. We ask that you bring the power of your spirit to bear on this study. And we ask, Lord, that your spirit of truth might come into this study, quicken and convict the heart unto repentance through faith in Jesus, by faith in Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, that all those sins, Lord, that we are addicted to, we love, we give you we give you right now, Lord, authority to wrench these things out of our lives. We know it's going to be a painful process, but Lord, we ask that you grab hold to these idols in our lives. That our pastors won't pray over us about. And we ask, Lord, we want you to wrench these things from our hearts, Lord. We know, Lord, that we're asking something that we probably will feel like regretting. But we give you the praise, the honor, and all the authority that you deserve and already have. But we want to submit our will to your authority. So, Lord, whatever it takes, whatever it does not take, we ask that you do it, Lord. That sin might be overcome in our life by a tsunami of your spirit. And these things we ask in the precious, the matchless, and powerful, omnipotent, and excellent name of the only true God in the universe. Amen. Now, let's delve into this prophecy. Powerful prophecy. Powerful. Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to be very methodical about going through this. I'm not going to skip through this chapter. 
We're going to read every verse in this chapter. Okay? Daniel chapter 2, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, oh, I'm sorry. Am I in the right place? Yeah. No, that's not the right place. I'm reading chapter 1. But I want to read chapter 2. Okay. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a dream wherewith his spirit was troubled and his spirit break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king. Now, <clears throat> at the outset, I have a teaching on YouTube that I originally uploaded to Google. And it's called, Is There a True Church in the World Today? And in that teaching, I talk about denominations. And I really go in depth and talk about the uh, phenomenon of denomination, how it works um, from a spiritual standpoint of view and from a mathematical standpoint of view. You have to read that. The reason why I'm, I'm, I'm throwing that out there is because... I want you to look in Daniel chapter 2 verse 2. Don't look at these people as not as only you know Chaldeans, magicians, astrologers, soothsayers and, and and I want you to look at these people from the perspective of denominations. Okay? When you go look at that other teaching, you're going to what I'm saying right now is going to um come to it's going to weigh heavily upon this second verse see uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon okay very powerful king he was the king of the world the Bible even calls Nebuchadnezzar the king of king God calls him king of kings that's interesting God calls him through the prophet Daniel king of kings all right but you know god sets up kings and takes down kings so god has allowed nebuchadnezzar to be the king of kings on earth now you know that that's not a, a situation that can last for eternity because the bible tells us that jesus is going to be king of kings and lord of lords but during the time of this prophecy, Daniel, through the unction of the spirit of truth that only comes from the Father, he says that the spirit that uh, Nebuchadnezzar is the king of kings. And so Daniel, there's no reason for us to doubt Daniel. So we're going to accept that because we don't have any other choice anyway. It says, then the king commanded to call the magicians, the astrologers, and the sorcerers. These look at all these people as different denominations. I'm going to name some: um, astrologers, magicians. Let, let's say Baptists, Pentecostals, Seventh Day Adventists, uh, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, Mormons, uh, and you know. Uh, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus. That's basically what you have right here. Okay? A whole group of people whose whole denomination, corporate body, is not led by the Holy Spirit of God. They're not. Now, Nebuchadnezzar had many of these men in the realm of Babylon, which is his own kingdom, but were also a part of other kingdoms that he had subjugated and came under his auspices through um, negotiations, through war, through through 
um, toppling of governments, uh, whatever. Okay? So these are denominations here. Look at it like that. Then it says, so they came and stood before the king. Verse 3. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream. So now he's going to all these denominations, the top leaders in all these denominations that I mentioned. And those that I've, I've mentioned in this conversation are just a sample, okay, of, it could be a, any number of combinations of different denominations. So it says, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed the dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. Now, already things are getting off to the, on the wrong foot. We know that because it says he already has let them know. He put his petition in, letting them know what he needed. So he's putting in an order. And already they are trying to change it. Because it says right here, And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. So he already says, I want to know the dream. My spirit is troubled. I want to know the dream. I forgot what I dreamt. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syria, O king, live forever. Tell thy servant the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces. See, they, they already trying to change the order that is already given uh, already been given in verse 3. You, okay, you tell us that, okay, you have a dream, right? Okay, tell us what the and you forgot what the dream was. Okay, tell us what the dream was. Remember your dream and we'll give you all kind of interpretations. Isn't that exactly what especially Christian denominations do? Whenever they see anything in the Bible, they all start stirring around and saying, we'll give you an interpretation. You even hear Christians say this in particular, because Muslims and Buddhists and Hindus, they really don't care too much about the Bible. But Christians in particular, they say things like this. Well, you have your, your interpretation. I have my interpretation. We all going to heaven. And, uh, and this is the work of, and they, and, and they imply by that. That all of the things that they all did, the, all the different ones will tell you, is all the work of the Holy Spirit. Especially when you see how this ecumenical ecumenism is strangling the world. You can tell that something is off. How can all of you all have the spirit of truth? operating in your denominations but yet everything that we're being told by the top authorities the bible biblical research committees and, and such it's all of god how could that be oh well we all the body of christ we all the body of christ but the holy spirit of god is telling everybody something different you know what that's called, people? The Bible calls that Babylon. That's what Babylon is. It's confusion. Now look at this. The child, so the Chaldeans are the first one to pipe up. Then, verse 4, Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syria, O king, live forever. Tell, us, tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said unto the Chaldeans, The thing is gone for me. If you will not...